Today, I'm really excited to have Roy Herman on the podcast. Roy is the founder of supercreator.ai, which is a mobile application that allows you to create short form videos 10x faster using generative AI. Prior to Super Creator, Roy had created several ventures in the past, such as Create TV, Groupwise, and Cryptonomy. He also worked at a couple startups to begin his career. So he was a mobile engineer at Cleanly and was the lead iOS engineer at Pathlight. The work that Roy is doing is super exciting to me because right now we're seeing a lot of the research development excite people with you know text to image and other different APIs that are coming out, but seeing it how it can be productized and actually deliver value to consumers is really exciting. And that's exactly what Super Creator does. We had a great conversation and I hope that you enjoy the podcast. Hello, Roy, and welcome to the podcast. Awesome, thanks for having me. Yeah, all right, let's dive right into it. So what got you into entrepreneurship and, um, and yeah, what's your story? Um, what got me into entrepreneurship? I always had ideas, actually, as a kid. Uh, I always had ideas, lots of ideas. And, you know, I was growing up with technology, and media and all that stuff and startups and things like that. And I always had the ideas, but I never was able to be the person doing them. And I remember actually like a specific story where I had this startup idea. I met with a, my dad's family friend who used to be like an, it was an investor. And I came to him with an idea. I was pretty young at the time and I presented it to him and he was like, Oh yeah, it's good. It's good. But uh, I don't invest. I don't invest if there's no technological founder. And I'm like, Oh, like, Oh man, there's no technological founder. I need to go find a technological founder. Even though I was, you know, technical, I just had, you know, was much more like these ideas and these vision. And I didn't necessarily, you know, think of, of being the one me to, to be building these things. And so once he said that, that kind of pissed me off a bit because it was like, mm -hmm. you know, as an entrepreneur, as this person with ideas, it's, it's, it's hard to, to hear no and to hear these like, uh, you know, denials and reasons why. So that seemed to me like, okay, if that's the reason why, then I'll go ahead and find somebody that can do that. And so I tried looking and it was really, really, really hard. Um, and ultimately, few years later, you know, I, I kind of was, was still playing around doing stuff. But a few years later, uh, I was at an internship in summer at a startup of somebody that I grew up with in Seattle. Um, and while I was interning, there was like a startup incubator. And I, I had these ideas, I presented it to the to the uh, incubator, like manager, or president or whatever their, their role was. And I showed it and the idea was it was wow, this was like 12, 13, 14 years ago or something like that. It was like, uh, or maybe 10 years ago, it was, it was like uh, Instagram meets Tinder. That was the idea. It was called Swift, like S-W-I-P-H-T, which is like swipe photo. That was like the clever thing there. And I okay. present how you would swipe between photos, whether you like it or not. Um, we'd have the Tinder interface for, for a social photo sharing app. And I presented it to him. And then he's like, oh, it looks, looks really good. And, and he's like, okay, he's like, what's, you know, I'm like, I need somebody to build. He's like, why don't, why don't you build it? You look smart. You look like, you look like you could figure it out. Right. Like, me? <laughs> what do you mean I need to build it? And so I went home, like I went back home and then I remember I, I opened my computer and I went to raywonderlick.com. It's like a famous iOS old school tutorial website. And there was this tutorial there which showed you how to like how to easily create the swipe UI. And I, I, I ended up hooking it up and doing it. Um, and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like in a few hours, what I envisioned, I just read these instructions right. and, and I was able to and so at that moment, I kind of like, I, I remember, I always say like, I fell in love at that moment. I, I it was like love at first sight. Uh, I still get goosebumps when I talk about it now. And it was like, this is amazing. This like made me feel like, you know, the, the ability to take an, a, something and, you know, idea and turn it into reality in, in a few hours. And it just, you know, excited me, especially as somebody who had so many ideas. Well, now I can turn these ideas into, into something that people can use and people can love. Uh, and people can, you know, get value from. And so that was, I think, the one of the turning points. But I had a few. That was definitely, you know, in the earlier time um, before transitioning into like a full-time entrepreneur. But those, that was really, I think, that first time with coding. And I, I played video games. I studied a bit. I did it before. But that was like the first time where it really like, clicked to me. Like I saw it because it was, it was visual. Moment. And you know what? I think also thinking about like what's going on now with Dolly and all this stuff with the, you know, text to image. All this stuff was here for a while, like a year and a half, two, three, like this, you know, GPT-3, but nobody really 
talked about it or, or you know talked about it that much and i think once it became visual something that people could see and, and immediately understand the power of this stuff is like when it when it changed and you, you could just see now this whole explosion it was like the pr that you know ai needed um right. and it makes sense because it was a picture it wouldn't be it wouldn't be text like nobody really gets that right um, no that makes sense oh that, that that's super interesting and um and yeah, I, I think like I think especially right now, a lot of people, including myself, think that this is the golden age for starting companies or, or building software and, and, and just putting your idea and, and being able to execute on it because there's so many different tutorials, uh, frameworks, and, and so much infrastructure there that you can yeah. really go from an idea to an actual product in the you know, span, span of a couple of days. Yes, yes. I'd even say a couple of hours. And I keep on saying, like, I wish that when I started getting into this, You'd be able to spin up a website, you know, in, in, in a second and hook up like all these things um, and, and put out a product and monetize or, give, you know, build features. Uh, it's, it's definitely I, I, I think there's never been a, a better time for many reasons. And like you mentioned, and definitely, mm-hmm. I mean, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited, even though, you know, uh, it's not when I started, but it's it's amazing because I think for there's never been a time where if you have the desire, you know, there's less things blocking you than ever before. Like there's no, there's no barriers on the marketing, on the technology, um, stuff that existed before. And, and I think it's cool because the people that really have the grit to go ahead and pursue and iterate and improve, those are the people that are going to succeed. And, and I think that's a much more fair world and a better world versus, you know, things that are not based on merit, uh, and grit and time spent right. and effort, uh, and I think it's great. I'm excited. I'm really excited to see all these things kind of pop up and many more people become uh, entrepreneurs, um, build stuff. I'm not, you know, into that. I think this next generation of startups will be much more on the content level um, mm-hmm. versus like an actual product level. Um, but, you know, it's it, it's very much the same. Your goal is to create value for people. You could do that through content. You could do that through product. Um, there's many, many, many ways. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. And, um, and yeah, so before we get into what you're building currently, uh, you know, you briefly mentioned this, but you had an internship at a startup, but, uh, you started with the corporate road before, you know, you hopped into building your own startup. So I was just wondering, you know, what was the decision making behind that? And do you feel like that experience helped you in the, in the future? So I wouldn't necessarily say that I went the corporate road. I tried going the corporate, the corporate tech road. Um, you know, I interviewed, for all the big tech companies, like Google, Facebook, um, Palantir, um, and I actually I didn't get I didn't pass the like software engineer interview because I also I honestly don't see myself really as a software uh, engineer. And I ultimately went to the startup path, early stage, and I did that a few a few times. That was an internship specifically. After that, I worked at a New York City based startup. And then I moved to San Francisco, worked as the first hire as a startup for these two, two founders that just exited. Um, so I didn't go the corporate way, but I did go the, you know, I didn't become an entrepreneur straight off. Um, and I think that's for a few reasons, but mostly, you know, to make my, my parents happy that I at least tried this way, right. uh, that I didn't go straight off. Um, but I, I also think it was a bit harder back then, you know, to, to create this, you know, financial, um, freedom where you can become an entrepreneur. Um, yeah. and so that's kind of the route that I went until I got to a certain point where I had something that I was building on the side, which was going viral. And, you know, that was the moment I was like, okay, my side hustles are, are, are now, you know, this, this, this is proof that, you know, I can do stuff. I can build stuff. It gave me a bit of that confidence to take that leap of faith and then transition into a, you know, more of a freelancer and entrepreneur, like kind of doing both until I ultimately was able to, you know, get up and build my own startups and being able to kind of support myself to continue spending time on those things. Yeah. Do, do you think there's like a specific moment that like that made you like flip the switch and like, OK, I got to go full time now on the side job or in the side hustle? Yeah, um, it's like it's always a lingering kind of thought. I feel like, you know, it's not an immediate thing. You probably, you know, you feel like something's happening or you, you, you feel like you're not fulfilling your potential and using up your time in the best way. Um, that's why you probably go ahead and work on these kind of side hustles um, because you're interested in, in doing more stuff. But that specific moment was when I built this app and it went, I was in San Francisco, it, it went viral when I, in Israel, um, you know, top of the app store, like writing, people are writing about it in the news, talking about it in the radio. Um, and I'm going and working at this place where like the product still don't know exactly what to do and so forth. And I'm right. 
you know, I have to like check and make sure that the, the app is working. And so that was the moment I was like, okay, I've spent, you know, six months here at giving it a try. Um, but now like this is, you know, all the, the stats are showing me that I should go ahead and, and, and do this. Right. Um, and then that was the moment when I go ahead, went and uh, kind of transitioned and decided to focus all my time into learning, into building. Uh, but I wanted to do that, honestly, uh, since I was in, in, in school, I think. Like, I, you know, I wanted to do that. I just it didn't necessarily make sense uh, logistically. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a little bit of a similar situation <laughs> in yeah. that way. But um, but yeah, I mean, that, that must be like really like ha- having like for myself, you know, there's, there's times I'm really invested in my work, but, you know, I also, you know, some, the podcast and, and other adventures also take, you know, so much energy out of me too. And, and sometimes like I need to focus on work, but yeah, I, I, my mind is on the podcast or other ventures and stuff too. So that must've been like really challenging to have, you know, every yeah. talking about your buyer lap, but you also have to go into work every day and switch mindset. Switch it mindset. was, it was, it would be also, you know, very hard and ultimately like just that you go in and you code for eight hours and then you come back, you know, take an hour or two, like try to go to the, maybe the gym and, and do something that's, a, you know, to, to help for to be a bit healthier. And then you go back and you code five or six more hours until 12 or two and you wake up and you, know, you can only do that for a certain time. I think until you really just like, cause the hours get longer at the job and like, yeah. you, and it's just like a, a vicious cycle. Um, but I was younger. I had more stamina, you know, I, I was able to do a lot more, more of that stuff um, and keep up with it longer. For sure. Makes sense. Um, but cool. Let's get into, so let's get into what you're building currently. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're building super creator and all one app that uses AI in order to help creators ma- uh, create, manage and promote content uh, 10 times faster than uh, using generative AI. So that, that was really interesting. And I remember when I checked out the demo at the, on the website, it was, it was really, really exciting stuff. Um, and, and it's exactly down the alley what I think, you know, all these new APIs and AI and, uh, and new innovations we will enable. So uh, mm-hmm. it was really cool to see, but, uh, first diving into that, like, what was the motivation behind creating it? What was that spark that you had that, Hey, I think this is a good way our a product needs in the market. So the story of super creator is actually an interesting one. I, I, going back a bit, I built create TV, which is this, you know, Israeli version of cameo, uh, that I built in Israel. Um, started it, bootstrapped it, uh, got it to 500,000 users, uh, 1,000 creators, 100 businesses. I, I raised a bit for it. And then the idea was, okay, let's, turn, let's take this thing global. And I had this vision for, you know, create TV, like valuable content. You'd go in and you'd, you'd pay for stuff that makes you better. And, you, and um, trying to turn these like to creators and, you know, making something where they can create behind the scenes and so forth. I had this grand vision for things. Um, and... I moved to LA and built, we kind of scaled the team to 15 people, built out all these features. The, the primary feature was working really, really well, which was the transactional ordering, you know, videos for businesses and, and personal use cases. Um, but we built out all these extensive, like when you're trying to be a content platform, it's a very, very different, you know, adjustment. So we spent the time building it and ran into a bottleneck. What was the bottleneck? Nobody was creating any videos to go ahead and, and subscribe to, or even like as teasers or anything. Um, and that was frustrating obviously, because we spent all the time and I, uh, went to talk to these creators, uh, many of them that I, you know, recruited myself to the platform, uh, and tried to understand like, Hey, you know, you've got all these followers, you've got a platform. That's all you need to do is just, you know, make a few videos, like five minute videos about whatever you want. Um, and after speaking to a lot of them, I basically understood that, you know, this, it, it's hard, it's hard to make videos. It's hard to make high quality videos. It's hard to make videos in, in general, if, again, especially if you want them to, to really draw a person to go ahead and, and pay for. Um, and that was on all kinds of sides of the, the spectrum of the non-experienced, you know, creators uh, and the experienced ones as well. So I had that mm-hmm. insight. And so I was like, okay, um, like I just, that's the bottleneck. I need to go ahead and, and fix that somehow. Uh, and I, uh, two more things happened. I moved to LA at the time. Like I said, I was living at launch house and I was in the creator economy residency, like during its first year. And so I was l- living with a bunch of entrepreneurs, creators, founders. Um, and I befriended a few creators there. Uh, there was, they, they were these young, uh, guys just like you. And what was interesting about them is that, you know, they had millions of followers, uh, but you wouldn't really notice it. Like they're not, you know, you always thought, I always thought like these, most of the influencers and stuff, you would know that they're like, these yeah. big characters, but these people were very normal, uh, nice, 
uh, nice kids. And so right. what was interesting to me is, okay, well, how, you know, how, how did they do it? And so I, I kind of got a sneak peek into their process and, and saw that they were outsourcing a lot of this stuff. They were getting one person to go ahead and give them all the best scripts. They were giving another person to get them all the visual assets. And, you know, at the end of the day, they just sit in bed and do three to four to five to 10 videos, send it over. I don't know, somebody else would schedule it for them. And, and, and that's it. That's how they would, you know, very in a smart way. And of course they would look at what worked better and they would get a, a feel because when you're uploading so much content, just like anything, the more iterations you do, the better you get at understanding and, and learning. Um, and so I, I had that. And then the thing that happened a bit before was I got access to GPT-3. Um, I would say relatively early. It was still closed beta. And that was before I moved to to LA. But for me, when I when I played with GPT-3, right. you know, I always remember this. I, I literally got like a creative anxiety attack where I was just trying to understand, you know, what is possible, what can it do? Because it was, I was amazed. And this was more than a year ago. I mean, and it's at that moment that, you know, I heard about GPT-3, I, you know, I read about it. It was closed beta. They were really hard on getting people in. I finally got access and it was really for you know, two days. I was just, this is like, everything is changing. Everything is going to change from this. Of course there were previous applications, but that was the first time that I saw that a, the level of the output is, 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 is infinitely, you know, creative and amazing and powerful. Um, but the second time, the simplicity of, of using it and integrating it and working with it. Um, and so at that moment, I kind of was like, okay, this is so crazy because I know that these people have problems with coming up with ideas and what to create content about. This right. is a great thing that can just give you infinite ideas. And then when I was in LA, I was like, oh, well, this is how they're doing it. Well, why don't I reverse engineer their process and I build something that is just almost like built like an engineer. Like if you're an engineer and your job was to create videos faster, how would you build this product? And, and, right. and that's, that's, that's how I build it. And that's how I started working on super creator um, with kind of those, like say like catalyst of, of events that happened. Um, and just, you know, again, thinking of like short form videos specifically about how the ability of being able with zero followers to get to the point where a lot of people see your content. And that's something that never happened before. So all these things together kind of made me, think and I also throw another kind of like anecdote that I had I was thinking about like Netflix um, and how about they look at the data and produce content in order to hopefully get better results but their issue is that the production time is so lengthy and expensive so their iterations are very slow and, and very you know high risk but what if you could do kind of the same thing but the exact opposite and, and that's and what I mean by that is TikTok has the you know the algorithm that discovers what is good and what is not and so the creators on the other hand what's coming is you can make a lot of videos that are based on these ideas these scripts and the more content you can read, you can start understanding what works better what doesn't um and it's like the you know the quibi mates like the creator economy answered in netflix in, in, in kind of a way so i right. connected all these ideas together and it just felt to me like i should focus on the exact opposite of what i was before which was you know the end of the funnel the monetization to exactly the opposite, which is help people do the most basic thing of, of being a content creator is, is creating content. Um, right. And that's where I like was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, and there were lots of different versions. I created an avatar of myself in the beginning on a web and this and that, but ultimately felt like the phone um, is the best way because the mobile phone is, I mean, there's lots of advantages you just don't get on a computer. One of them is the camera. One of them is the mobility. Um, right. If you're looking at short form, that's the medium. So I think it makes sense to just have that as the kind of the what's the like the remote to, to control to go ahead and, and create content to the short form video world. Uh, right. So that's the long, short story of <laughs> how it all started. No, I mean, it, I think there's like a couple things to dig into there. Right? Like I think yeah. first off is like. So same thing, like when I first saw GPT-3, uh, my, my friend's like, oh, have you, have you tried playing around with this API? And luckily he had access. So I just, you know, got his credentials and got the login and stuff. And it was so exciting. I was like, wow, there's so much stuff that like you can do here. There's so many different areas we can play around with. But I think like for me, what was, what was even like, of course the API itself was great, but I think what was more exciting to me and what I was really looking forward to is seeing how it'll be productized in the future. Yeah. Because yeah, getting APIs like sort of getting OpenAI to uh, you know write write for, short form content or like you know make thumbnails for example, that's cool. But it's still sort of a gimmick right now where yeah. it's like you can do it, but it's it's just to see how cool it is. 
but actually putting it in a product that that people can use and uh, and and it can change their lives that is what really excites me so that's what really excited me about super creator as well because you know as, as somebody who does, makes content i spend hours editing i spend hours you know doing a lot of different stuff like uh, like creating you know hashtags all, all that type of stuff so having them all in one platform is a genuinely big change to my life yeah uh and that's so exciting to me um but yeah, so like that, that's, it's really exciting stuff with Super Creator. Yeah. And I think one of the things too is I learned that just from the experimentation is with it. So AI, I was like, okay, I'm going to build an AI first product. Everything's going to be AI. Wherever I can put AI, I'm going to put AI in the, in the app. And the other thing is like, because it's the phone, because, you know, I wanted to, I think it's super important in this world of AI is to give the, the to empower the person that's doing it. So on one hand, to give them the ability to, you know, really do whatever they want, but at the same time, to be able to give them the ability to put their own creative input into their, into the video, uh, right. into the content. Uh, and I just think with, sorry, with the camera, with the phone, there's so much of that. So it's anywhere from what you're filming to how you're talking, to how you're saying things, to how you're holding, right? There's, you can do so much, especially with, uh, you know, AR technology and all these things that will just allow you to make the, the content much more visual. Uh, and another kind of thing that inspired me to build it the way that I did um, was The Matrix, which is I, I'm a big movie buff. So a lot of the inspiration that I get from all of these ideas is for movies. It's from these crazy right. ideas and stuff that I saw in movies. So this other kind of and this is how I'm always thinking about the product. Like I wanted to. Fe- uh, and so this specific example is from The Matrix where they have that white room where he kind of like summons things. And he's like, give me this. Give me that. Da, da, da. Right. That's how I want the experience to be. And that's how I envision it to be where you're the star. You can, you're, you're telling the story in any way you want. It could be with your face. It can be without your face, but you're like the director, you're the star and everything that you want, everything that you imagine, it'll just be there. So that's kind of the, the way that I'm building. And so that's why, you know, you want to get script, you'll get that. You want a background asset, you'll, you get that. You want it this way. You know, you shouldn't have to necessarily, I think, spend time on the things that you like that on those certain things, you should be just able to do them and, and figure out how to put them together in, in creative ways. Um, you shouldn't have to do this things that are over and over again, like, you know, take that time. I I just think that it can be so much more optimized still infinitely optimized, especially where the technology is going. Um, but those are just some of the inspirations as well as like MIT media lab is, is a place that I also, you know, really like and, and, and try to think about those things also when I'm building an idea, ideating the product, um, to make it show the beautiful things in technology. So that's, right. that's really the, you know, one of the things that's super important for me as well. Right. Yeah. And I think like, you know, so, so I remember when, so when I was creating content, uh, I, you know, I just recently started doing short form videos to tease the podcast. Um, and so when I, when I was originally editing, I, I you know, I, for the, for the captions, uh, when people are talking, cause you know, that's, it's pretty yeah. helpful when you're doing short form videos. Of course. I, you know, at first I was manually doing it. I was typing out each caption. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to work. Uh, so then I put it into like an AI processor to just give me a, to just give me a script. But I'm like, even then I have to manually put in the caption. So I was going through all this, you know, uh, I was going through all these issues in order to do this. And then I throw into TikTok, uh, the TikTok creator studio, because I just recently decided to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I saw that they do all of this for you. They do the captions and and, and it's all there. So you know, now I use that in order to I leverage that in order to make content for other platforms. And so with this, it's like one step even ahead of that, where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you can just be on captions and like making, you know, beautifying stuff and stuff like that. It's you, it's giving you a whole content platform in, in an application. And it's, it's, it's really not limiting you either. It's not whatever, like you can make the video while you're, uh, while you're, uh, while you're filming and yeah. and of course you can do that with tiktok creator studio and stuff too but you don't have to you know have the assets ready you don't have to uh have the whole thing planned out you can plan it on the way as you're going if you yeah. want to exactly yes 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 uh definitely that's like the the other thing with the phone it's an anyone anywhere anytime is the way that i say it as well like we always have our phone you know you could switch you can switch the background you could do all that stuff very very easily and it is super super powerful so that's also one of the things like i wanted any everybody to be able to create content and right. phones right more people have phones than a than a good computer to be able to record stuff um 
And the way I also think about it is I, I call it like an operating system for the, you know, for the modern content creator, for modern content creation, because that's the other thing. I really think that we are going much more into a world where, you know, the, instead of focusing on software, it's going to be a content play. Mo more and more people are going to engineer content and, and make it better uh, and faster and stronger and smarter. Um, but the, there's no real tools of, of people that are thinking about it that way. Everything is like a fun video editor and stuff. I think this is going to be a, you know, a, 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 just as much as a profession as it is going to be a hobby or just as much professional um, as it is anything you know else. Making content that yeah. gives your potential audience value um, is, is pretty much the way that you do marketing today in short form video. Again, is, is really um, at the front and center of that. But if you think about the tools Everything is approaching it. I just think in a not not in a full scale way of like if this was your job, how would you build a platform? What would you want if you, you know, and, and that's what's great about it as well is that I can test it and I can figure out how quick it is to do and how how it's working uh, mm -hmm. and, and do these iteration loops much faster. Right. Than you would with a product that you need to kind of a long cycle. Um, and. So far, it's good because right now also I'm doing kind of the full loop as well. So the design, product, coding, right, everything. So the loop is, is very, very quick. It's talking to users on Discord, being able to uh, get their feedback and, and fixing the bugs and adding new features just as like the really uh, direct iteration loop and being able to do sometimes multiple versions in a day. Um, and that's also been fun. I've never really had that at this kind of scale and at this, you know, uh, moment where there's so much new stuff coming and so many abilities and just peeling it off one by one with hearing what the what our users is, are saying uh, and, and it's fun it really feels like it, we're helping them and it's a problem that they really have um so it's it's you know it keeps me going obviously yeah for sure and and i guess like like going into the app itself so i know you know one of the one of the concerns that people have with a with with ai generated content is that it might become a little bit formulaic depending mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you know how how different weights are with you know with AI and um, and just in general, like when you're using AI generated platforms, you might just have this, this content that generates clicks rather than like you know human expression. So when when you think about it from that perspective, like how 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 do you uh, when you're creating super creator, how do you make sure that the creator is really at the front and center of the content and it's their content and the AI is just helping them rather than the AI taking over their content per se for sure so i think one of the ways to look of it is like a you know a co-pilot for video makers um where it's assisting you but it's not replacing you and in the in the way that the app is built really every step of the way the user has the power to do everything to edit everything um from the script making to the editing to the creation to the editing of the video to the distribution um it's kind of like and that's why I always think this is not going to be a commodity because we're going to keep on pushing in the strongest and the most advanced technologies and creativity is being able to take what's available to you and presenting things in a new way or in a different way. Um, it's all about, it's all relative to what's available. And so for us, it's a, you know, 80% AI and a 20% human coming in um, and telling the story and making the content in the way that they want. So I think only, you know, everything will only get better and become more accurate and based on how the user wants it, not just necessarily on what will perform better. Um, and again, I think it's j the job of the creator to take whatever information they have and present it in a way that they find in their, in their own way, because that's how they can create, you know, their own authenticity, their own way of telling stories. Um, otherwise, everybody else would just say, take that and do the same thing. So where's, where's your uniqueness? Uh, you can only do that for a certain while and then, you know, people will be, um, losing interest or copying you. So you need to be, I think the level of creativity is just going to increase because we are going to need to be more creative faster because right. people will be able to very easily copy what we do. Um, and this is what AI is really, really good at doing, right? It's really, really good at taking data and, you know, maybe not copying one for one, but taking that data as inspiration and being able to produce similar data. And so any good, successful person that's putting out their data out there, their content out there, they're in a very high likelihood that somebody will open a Google Colab or, you know, take this uh, API and, and use that. And it's already happening. Um, right. So it opens up a lot of, I think, thoughts of what is creativity? Who's going to be creative? How can you be creative in a world where AI can do 
everything, but not really. Right. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. So shifting a little bit uh, into like the product building aspects of things. So, you know, I like, like I touched on before earlier, you know, I saw GPT-3, I, I thought it was really exciting, it's exciting stuff. But, you know, I, I, I think one of the things we're struggling with and on, on a similar, in a similar note with this, uh, with the struggle, like I think, like, you know, with crypto, I feel like a lot of people want to just throw blockchain into like the technology into all these different problems that don't necessarily need it. Yeah. Um, so I was just saying like in, in the same way with AI and like, you know, open uh, with uh, GPT-3 and other similar APIs, how do you think about building products, like use it, using it in your products mm -hmm. and, and, and the potential that they have, like when, when you are building products? Cool. So this is a good, a good topic. And for me, one of the kind of thoughts that I had is I feel like there's been a paradigm shift um, in product design uh, in this new AI age. And what I mean by that is we're shifting from a kind of a world where the, the device was the limiting factor to the world where we are the limit, limiting factor. Because you can pretty much, if you take an app, like it can do, it can replicate all the, it can get the person from A to B to C to D, all the processes without really, you know, needing it. If you would need to translate all of those into a certain way. So you need to think of, again, how do you make an experience which gives the user on one hand the power, but at the same time gives them the, the feeling that they're doing something, that they're participating, um, that they're able to do something that not other people have, have done because then they're going to, you know, you don't want to, if everybody's doing it and they're getting, you're seeing that again a bit with Dolly, right? It's okay. It's, it's not that cool to go ahead and create now a text image. It's about taking it and making it into a video or in painting it. The layers are just getting more and more and more. So when you're building a product, I think you need to think of, you know, taking it to the cutting edge of where the technology is, but leaving it in a way which makes the person, you know, happy and, and enjoying it. And, and, and I feel like there's a, a level of skill that's, that, that is there. Um, and that was also something important because I was like thinking of, you know, uh, Figma or uh, other products where it makes things easier, but there's a hundred percent a way for to improve your skill and become better at it and become a professional at it. It doesn't do ev everything for you. It just makes things easier. Um, so I think that's pretty much the same thing. You want to, you want to do that because then there's a really a place to, to build a community, to build a, you know, a, um, to really build something that can keep on growing and growing and is not a hundred percent, you know, everybody can do the same thing. Right, right. It's about empowering the user to, to you know, be creative and and, and exactly yes, go yes. farther with their workflow rather than doing their workflow for them, but then you know just having them do the same thing over and over again. I think you you said a really really good point. It's about leaving room for creativity. Like that's that's the that's that's the thing. And of course, it it can be harder, it can be easier, but you want to leave the room for creativity because then you won't get an enjoyment out of it. You won't feel like there's anything that's about you in there. So I think that's just that's a really good point. You want to leave creativity so somebody can go ahead and, and be creative with your powerful, but creative. Exactly. And, and I think even as you see the shift, like, you know, as I, I know a lot of artists have been really bit worried about it because they're like, you know, why you know, AR, AI art is, we're going to lose that human aspect and human value. So I think going along those lines, the like letting them, letting humans have creativity will make sure that we still have that. But at the same time, we expand the horizons, but what yeah. AI enables us to do. Exactly. Um, so yeah, super interesting. Um, so yeah, like shifting into more general AI, uh, you know, AI has been shifting every industry drastically now for the last, you know, around 10 years, especially. Uh, and it's been super exciting to see how it's been helping us in areas, uh, a whole lot of different areas. But I think, especially recently, you know, seeing it being able to comprehend and produce human expression and art, that's something that's, I'm sure in the background has been going on for a while, but it has really come to the forefront right now. So I was just wondering, like when you, when you think about, um, you know, when you think about it, what do you think are like key pivotal moments that, that have, have brought us here? And, and when you think about the future of it, like what, what excites you about it? So key pivotal moments that have uh, happened. Um, one of them is, I think, if I understood this correctly about, you know, Moore's law and what has happened is that, we Moore's law has been broken, but what has changed everything is the parallel, the ability to run things in, in parallel and then effectively kind of go horizontally. Um, and so that has allowed the ability to start making much, you know, bigger calculations in a shorter amount of time and effectively get to this place where we can train models to do all these things because at the end of the day, it's really number crunching and finding, I think, things on many dimensions that we necessarily as humans can't see, but the machines can. So I think 
you have that as the kind of layer zero. And then layer one is these companies like OpenAI, which I think was the pioneer. Um, and you know, it's still probably respected as the most, the, 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 the number one uh, AI company in terms of the, the, the breakthroughs that they make. Um, and so once they released GPT-3, for me, that was the, you know, that was the, the game changer. Uh, right. Then Dolly, of course, but I, I was already using like latent diffusion before Dolly was released and stuff like that. So I was seeing these, you know, I was seeing it starting to get uh, commoditized in some sense, but then uh, stable diffusion or state stability AI, um, which is in my opinion, changed probably the whole technology world just as much as, as, as these other companies, because they've really said, you know, they've really stuck up for the open source community and for the openness and collaboration um, of these technologies, which is something that opened up, you know, if, if Dolly opens up uh, a million creators, then stability AI, like that opens up hundreds of thousands of developers that open it up for a hundred million, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think those things, and, and if you want to take it forward, then I can expect, you can expect a lot more uh, open source projects to go ahead and be built, a lot more APIization uh, of technologies. I, I believe we're all going to turn into APIs, uh, or we, we are pretty soon, or if we want to. Um, and we can also talk about, about macro, but I think, you know, AI is going to, not only technology, obviously, but every, every everything is going to be affected. And that is going to somehow, in my opinion, bring it down to, to content. And people are going to be focusing much more on content for, for macro reasons. Right. Um, and so right. it's certainly exciting. Like I just keep on, you know, the iterations like, okay, you know, this, then run the next iteration, run the next iteration pretty quickly. You'll, you'll understand that things are going to change very, you know, rapidly, um, and, and create all these new opportunities and, and, and these new adjustments in the world. Um, and it's very exciting. I think it, even for me, it's like, whoa, it's moving so fast, but also, when you're building a product today, I do think you need to think about, you know, I feel like, again, it's a paradigm shift also in, the, in terms of technology, because you can focus on the, you know, deeper tech solutions and, and really like spend the time. Um, but there's a very good chance that by the time you go ahead and do that, it'll be, you know, if it's good enough, it'll be open sourced by uh, 10,000 hungry and curious developers to go ahead and solve it. And so, um, I, I don't know how a lot of these big companies are thinking about it, but is it, it is an interesting thought. Uh, right. Is there really a technological moat uh, as like there used to be? I saw somebody today write a funny tweet where it's like the number one rule about building a, a, a moat in, a, in an AI company is you can't or something like that. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, it, it kind of makes you think because, again, if you're smart with AI, you could very easily kind of reverse engineer certain models with the data to be able to, get them to that certain level. And, and I think also with the open source and the ability to have people collaborate out of passion, not out of uh, money to go ahead and build things um, is amazing. And it's, it's great yeah. for entrepreneurs and builders. Um, it's like the, the best time ever in, in that sense. Yeah, even, even big companies now, I mean, like when you go to hugging, like go on Hugging Face and, and, and different other uh, websites, you know, they're, they're posting their models there for people to use. Yes. Uh, so, so it's all like source uh, massive. What's it called? Like a waterfall effect, right? Where now all these other companies are going ahead and doing it. Um, Whisper, right? And OpenAI does do a lot of great open sourcing of projects. Uh, yeah. And I think it's great. It's just going to allow a lot more entrepreneurs to, to figure out um, good ways to use these things and create value for other people. Um, and it's it's like a blessing, you know, it really is. Uh, I, I know. So I know one of the things, you know, you frequently post about, I think on LinkedIn, is, you know, we, we, you talk about some of the advancements that we're seeing. So, you know, we yeah. have you know, text to music, art, video now, and, uh, you know, movement. I think you posted that recently, yeah. uh, you know, super interesting. And, and I feel like we're going to get to a point where almost all forms of human creativity can be generated, uh, you know, through AI. So I was, I was just wondering, like, you know, how far do you think this goes? Like, do, we think, do you think AI is just going to make all the content for us? We're going to have full feature length movies with AI actors and, you know, like how, how far do you think it goes? Yeah. I mean, I, for sure, 100%. It's all a matter of time. It's not a matter of it's going to happen. It's it's when and, and how long until we get there. Um, I certainly will say it will happen. But again, if you ask me if it's in 10 years, 20 years, five years, I think that's really the interesting kind of thing to debate. Yeah. Um, I do think that as AI gets better and better and it goes in all these other areas, we're going to be focusing much more on, on, on creating stuff 
whether it's again content or, or physical, but probably more in the digital world because that's where it's going to be affected most directly. Um, and the stories are just going to get better. And we are definitely moving into a time where it's not going to be a 2D piece of content. You're going to have the ability to instantly turn something you saw on screen into a 3D experience where you can go ahead and explore and become the actor or the actress and the character, um, very much like a Ready Player One um, sort of wor world. If you want to go a bit deeper and more interesting, the way I also think about it is I think about time. Um, and I think we are, it, it's, it's going, technology is just going to completely reinvent the way we think about time because in a world where the technology is infinitely better then the time it takes to do things could potentially be instant. And so if you live in a world where you can get everything instantly, even in the physical world, then your sort of perception of time changes. If I could see people instantly, if I can get something to me instantly, um, you know, it'll feel like we'll live forever because everything will happen much, much faster. Um, so it, it just, I just brought that up because of this interesting theory that I heard in one of these recent podcasts where they were talking about how, you know, the, the whole uh, space time kind of uh, is, is something that was invented by, you know, humans. And it's just the way for us to perceive everything around us. But there's now these new discoveries about these different ways of measuring things, which make everything much, much like simpler in terms of uh, understanding and breaking down and they're discovering these whole new equations, which if you build the system of the world that we're in based of like, you know, just offer much quicker, much simpler, um, ways to do things. Uh, and so I do think we're going there. I'm always a bit too, you know, too optimistic and too futuristic, but you know, if you look at what I saw before it, it, it is playing out, it's playing out just, you know, just as I very like much like an engineer, I just ran the logical, steps of, of what's going to happen next and then and then and um soon i do think we're going to have like bcis and then we're going to be able to you know communicate because it's text right so if you have a way to con convert your thoughts into natural language then you'll be able to directly interface with pretty much every technology because everything understands NLP, you know nlp today yeah. um, and that'll also be exciting right because then you'll really be able to do the matrix sort of vision where Give me that, give me that, da, da, da. and the first stage will be input to output. But later we'll even have output to input, which is, that is, I haven't still determined a uh, decision or philosophy in terms of, do we want like an input of, uh, you know, BCI sort of stuff uh, coming in? Because that might, that might be really the, the end of our, you know, functioning as complete, like we'll be fully detached with technology at that point. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, actually that's, so that time phenomena is, is super interesting. I never thought about it like that, but you're right. Like if, if everything, if you can get everything instantly, then your concept of time stretches out almost infinitely as well. Like uh, it doesn't, but like uh, very a lot. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just, it like reminds me of those movies where you're seeing these like family in this, you know, futuristic spaceship and they're just, they're so chill and relaxed and they're looking at the, and, and the world, you know, time is in, it's infinitely fast, but it's also so slow because you, you can get right everything immediately so it's it's like instant and it's infinite infinitely slow at the same time which i think is um interesting and uh yeah i wonder when when it's gonna happen if the world still exists by then there's other scenarios that can happen of course uh, but considering we're all here and we run the iterations uh ahead then it, it's gonna eventually happen and i do think not to that sense but obviously in our lifetime there's gonna be in, in 20, 30 years, like the world we're going to live in is just going to be so different. Right. Hopefully for good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. That, that, that's the thing, right? Like, and, and this is sort of scary about, you know, going completely with AI generated content is that if you don't have a human involved at all, you can get to a point where it's just, you know, AI is just generating stuff to click to like whatever, uh, you know, whatever stimulates people or whatever gets you the most views. And it just keeps generating that over and over and over again until the point where it's, where I think you'll lose a lot of uh, a lot of you know individual creativity, so I, I think it's a little bit scary. Like it has to be a balance, and I think both ones have to coexist here. Yeah, I think it's going to be a cat and mouse game eventually, and then there's going to be other solutions for you know letting a certain amount of quantity of, of content um, and making limits and ways to just it's it's very much a game theory sort of uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Once everybody can create content and everybody knows what the algorithm is. And there's going to be new different things that are going to splash and, and systems that are going to be built. Um, so I like, I think once we get there, we, we, we can worry about it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think creativity is actually 
human humanity that is that's what's special um about us and again it's always it's it's contextual it's relative to the specific abilities and choices that you have it's all about choices ai is all about choices humans are all about the choices that we make um kind of define our story it's the same with ai so creativity is again is using the available choices and presenting uh you know harmony in non in non obvious places and and things like that um so we'll always be able to be creative as long as we have options if you have zero options you can't be creative if you have infinite options can you be more creative or less creative more creative i think that's i was thinking about that the other day that's to me the the like the the argument why it'll allow us it allows to be much more creative because if you have zero options you have no way to be creative and if you have a billion options you have a billion options to to be creative Right. Um, and that's where we're going. We're going into the place where we're going to have infinite options and it's actually going to be harder to be creative in that way. You're going to, it's, it's going to be more competitive. Um, right. everybody can do it. So I think it's going to, this is the boost of creativity. I call it the creation generation. Um, that's, that's what I think we're entering into. Right. That makes sense. Well, yeah. perfect. All well, just to wrap things up before, you know, uh, before we end the podcast, I was just wondering, like, is there a book that you, uh, that you, uh, you know, recommend or a piece of content you think we should check out? So I always say I've never read a book in my life, actually. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a audio visual learner. I always learn through content. So very much the stuff that I, that I also work on. Um, if there's a book specifically to know, but, uh, I'm trying to think of movies. I could recommend maybe a movie that I, that I, a few that I like. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let me think really quickly. Uh, Goodwill Hunting, The Truman Show, um, are so, some of the f- more favorite ones that I like. Pay It Forward is a good is a good one, but these are all old school. I mean, I have a lot of I love movies. Um, those are just some of my, my favorite from back in the day. Right, makes sense. Okay, perfect. And, and what are the next steps for you and Super Creator now? So we're gonna launch really soon. We're looking to I'm literally working on the version that is coming up to launch in the background, and hopefully, over the next two weeks, we'll have it out the new version, which is got some really exciting things coming out for that which i think are going to make hopefully a lot of noise but we'll see um but yeah that's kind of the timeline so middle uh before the middle of november okay perfect i'll put i'll put the link the website and everything down below so if anyone wants to check out they can but uh thank you so much uh, for coming on to the podcast right this is really great awesome man i hope uh i hope it was good i hope i didn't talk too much no 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 it was great it was great thank you so much (laughs) all right really nice to meet you and yeah we'll, we'll talk soon